Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Tuesday, June the 1st of 2021. We begin this evening with a Celtic parable reading called A Meadow in June. I walk through a meadow in June, wildflowers stroke my legs, red and yellow petals caress me, the dew on the grass washes me. Is each tiny flower an angel? Is each petal an angelic finger? Are the angels cleansing me of sin? Are the angels my lovers and friends? Here and now, God is present. Here and now, heaven is on earth. Here and now, eternity is present. Here and now, joy is infinite. Our prayers this evening come from the worship resource, Hear Our Prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh God, we use calendars extensively to set our schedules, to remember special events and to mark the passing of time. We ask that you help us to use our calendars as instruments of spiritual growth. Remind us that a busy schedule is more oppressive than impressive if it crowds out occasions of prayer and reflection. Teach us to regard each dawn as the beginning of a holy day and to identify every deed as an opportunity for serving you. Inspire us to rejoice in the expanse of time as we live within it and look ahead to its promised never ending. Giver of our daily bread, sovereign over all eternity, we extend to you our gratitude and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is Psalm 139, the first 18 verses. <clears throat> o Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them, they are more than sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 11 to 21. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has descended into, ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. 
Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are already condemned, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> our reading this evening is from my friend and colleague, David Burkers. He writes, I love doing puzzles of various kinds. One of the interesting and entertaining things found on Facebook for those who have an account are the various skill testing pictures, puzzles, and riddles. I am always amazed at one in particular that has a picture of something and the viewer is told to state what color it is. My wife Anne and I always see a different color and I'm not sure why that is. I think we also tend to think that our own answer is the correct one. These puzzles often catch us overlooking the small details. Have you ever had a test that started with, make sure that you read the whole exam paper before beginning? And at the end of the question sheet has simple instructions to quickly finish the exam? Our passage today is an important one. We are familiar with the passage of John 3:16 which offers us the key to salvation, but we can't stop reading there. The next verse gives us some equally important information. God didn't send Jesus into the world to judge, but to save. We often think that we need to behave a certain way or do certain things to gain favor with God. The reality is that there is nothing we can do to save ourselves other than simply relying on God. If you feel like you have failed, know that it is okay. We all have and probably always will. But God loves us and just wants us to love God and not worry about being perfect. What a relief. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> ever engaging and ever renewing God, on Pentecost long ago, you startled the followers of Christ with a gracious and glorious gift of spirit. It came as the rush of a mighty wind, as the flicker and flame of fire, as the power that transforms conversation into true communication. Enter again into our midst, into the comings and goings, the dealings and doings of our daily lives. When our faith is becalmed by idleness or indifference, let your spirit propel us. As we open ourselves to the insights of your word, set us on a course of service. When our faith lacks energy, let your spirit fire it up. Turn us toward the tasks of reaching out to the rejected and healing the brokenhearted towards the goals of preserving your good earth and making it humanity's haven. When our faith speaks a language few understand, let your spirit provide a common tongue. Help us proclaim the good news with clarity of speech and deed that leads to dialogue and partnership and cooperation among your people. Now we come to you in silent prayer Trusting that the concerns we carry, the hopes we hold, the yearnings we confess will be accepted and acted upon by the Spirit's power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Friends, inform your faith by word and spirit. Transform the world by practicing the peace of Christ. Go forth as disciples so that through your believing in God, you will be loving of others. Amen. Good night.